and welcome back. I'm your host, TNT, Tara Nicole Tarver, and you are watching Supernatural Lifeline Revelations. Today we are going to talk about when God has intervened in your life and he creates family, generational wealth, generational health, business, and he turns beauty into ashes. And what happens when you go through a storm in a family and you come out on top when you come together when you have God. My guests today are the Carthons and Mama Linda. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you. I'm going to let you, James, introduce your whole family. Here we go. Here we go. I'm James Carthon and this is my lovely wife, Alicia crazy about this woman man uh, and this is this is my lovely daughter africa rose and my mother-in-law miss linda davis now i'm not quite sure how we originally got connected years it's been so many years but we've interwoven and you guys have been such a blessing in my life and i love how god brings people together and then you guys begin to actually um when god really brings connections it's like there's reciprocity you bless me i bless you we give referrals to one another there's church we've had so many interactions that are just so great you tell me about something i show up there and i tell you you show up and then i tell you about business and you show up and it's just so awesome to see how these things happen so one time you i was with you both and you guys began to tell me a story this story that James told mm. me about how your daughter your, your wife was pregnant mm. I'm gonna let you tell it because it had it rattled me in my spirit mm. to where I remembered what you said you want to talk about testimonies their daughter was being born and there was complications during birth this man grabs the doctor's hand speaks life over him and this, what I'm talking about, all I saw was transferred anointing when Praise you touched God. him. Yeah. Transfer. I mean, and you're talking. I'm in a video. I'm watching what you're saying. You're speaking, but I'm seeing as Praise if I'm there because you spoke with such power. And um, can you just tell us the story? I, uh, the greatest thing that I remember was that they told you that there was a 2% chance that, mm. that, that your child could live. And you did not get in fear, doubt, or worry. You took authority. You spoke life. And we see your daughter just graduated Africa from high school. Congratulations, Africa. <laughs> and so please tell us, um, you know, break it down to its simplest form, exactly what you did at that moment, what they told you, what happened, and what you guys did as a family. Basically, it went like this. The doctor had um, actually grabbed me and said, Mr. Carthon, can I speak to you? I said, sure, doc. He pulled me aside, had my family sitting in one side of the uh, hospital uh, room, and he pulled me aside by the door, and he says, uh, Mr. Carthon, I must inform you, and he dropped his head like this. He said, and he wouldn't look at me, he wouldn't look me in the eye. And um, he said, I must inform you, your, your daughter has a 90% chance of dying. And I looked at him, I said, look at me, doc. Oh, come here, man. And I grabbed it. I looked at him. I said, you could have told me my daughter had a 99.9 tenths chance of dying. I would have said, no problem for my God. Because, see, my God does miracles every day. Oh, this is nothing for my God. I said, give me your hand. He looked at me and said, oh. I said, give me your hand. <laughs> see, I'm all man. And I also punk at me. So I said, listen, I'm gonna pray over your hand. So I prayed. And I said, in the name of Jesus. And I went into a prayer. Then I said, Go. And he did this. <laughs> I said, go. Ain't nothing going to happen to my daughter. <laughs> With a smile. Hmm. Praise God. Then I went back over to my family. And they said, what the doc said? I said, they said, everything going to be fine. Wow. <laughs> Without a shadow of doubt. Wow. Wait, 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 wait. Mm. See, that's what I love. Uh, I, I love what you just said. I just had to interject. You got to go back into the story. But he good. literally, when they wanted to know what the doctor said, you did not speak what he said to them. And I'm going to tell you, a lot of people didn't know. My son, Isaac, when he was born, the doctor mm. said that he, they said, oh, did they tell you during the ultrasound there was a tumor? I said, <laughs> no. And then they were in there, and he said, well, you know, he's, he's going to, um, we don't need to do all this and do all that. And I said, okay. The grandmother came, and she said, what did the doctor say? I said, I said I'm not going to repeat that. And she said, well, I know you're believing. Mm. I know you're believing God. Mm. But, what, mm. but just what did they call it? Mm. Remember, mm. we have power with our words. words. Yeah. Mm. I said, mm. Mom, I am not going to speak that. And you know what happened? They all forgot about it because they didn't have a name for it. Mm. I, for two years, went back and forth. Mm. And my son 
Finally, they gave me the before and after. They're like, it has disappeared. <laughs> but they never got a name. Mm. So it reminded me right now, you would not give them the full report that he said to give life to what he said. That's, That's right. right. That's right. That's so right. what did you do Amen. from that moment? Here he is going back with your anointing in your hand. <laughs> <laughs> that your God is now his God, That's whether right. he knows it or not. That's right. That's right. That's <laughs> Those right. hands are no longer his hands, but the hand of God is now orchestrating. And the family is like, oh, okay, everything's going to be okay. Now they're speaking, it's okay. Now what happened? Well, because I've been trained, I study my word to not speak certain things. Yes. And as the head of my household, there are certain things I just wouldn't allow. So when he spoke to me and said that, you know, she had a 90% chance, I said, that was out. So when I went back to my family, I told them, listen, everything's going to be all right. Matter of fact, I never told my wife, my wife actually, what the doctor said because I didn't even want to mention it. It wouldn't, it, it, it couldn't live. In my book, that was it. My baby going to be fine. There you go. Well, I, but I remember, you know, after him speaking to my husband, because we knew something was going on. Right. But I remember after my husband spoke with him and he came back, he, you should have saw him. He was like, do this, do that. Do, I mean, he's, the wheels start turning. He was thinking and, you know, so he really, after my prior, husband. Prior to you seeing him, did he look different? He looked worried or something? Did he look? He almost looked. I don't want to say worry, kind of like he didn't even care. Not that he didn't care, right. but it's he didn't just put... Another yeah, right, right. But, but after my husband uh, spoke okay. with him, mm -hmm. a whole different energy, a whole different, mm -hmm. you know, okay, we're going to do this, get over there, do this, do that, do that. And then they ended up, you know, flying her by helicopter to another hospital to have a procedure done. I mean, to have a major uh, now, just what was really amazing that I've never forgotten, and I, I, one of my, you walked in right in one of my classes when mm -hmm. I was talking about your husband's testimony. Remember mm -hmm. that when mm -hmm. I was teaching I a prophetic mm -hmm. class? Mm -hmm. And what I remember him saying was that they said there was a 2% chance that only with, with this situation, only 2% <coughs> of the babies would live. And the doctor told him that um, the only babies that live mm. are usually African American baby girls. There is a fight that is in African, I could just cry right now. Yeah, they said 10%, <laughs> but that is 10%, very but true. The, yeah, okay. Uh, they, they told us that. They said that most, because this a special machine that she had to get on was called ECMO, and most babies die while they're on it or when they're trying to even connect them to it. And you said there was another baby that came in. There was another baby that they flew in from Japan, I believe, mm -hmm. and died. And so we, you know, we were just like thanking God and praising God. But they told us, the nurses were saying, most of the babies that live are the black, African, the African-American girls. That Not, is amazing. Yeah, she said the girls. Wow. Yeah. This is it's so amazing. Mm -hmm. So when now it, the clothes seem clear, what, what was the next transition for the family? What did you guys do? How did, uh, how did after the procedure, what happened next? Really, it was us, you know, her, she, she was in the hospital for about four, almost five months, of course, on life support. And uh, just us going to the, to the uh, hospital daily. Yeah. And, uh, of course, our parents being there. And his mom was actually, you know, uh, I don't know if I should say she was like on drugs. Mm -hmm. She was on uh, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. crack cocaine. Mm -hmm. His mom, she had been on drugs for 30 years. Mm -hmm, she mm -hmm. would, the, the longest she would be sober was like six months. Mm -hmm. And uh, she lived in Michigan. So my husband told her, mom, I need you to come here. Yes. I need you to help. Cause I was kind of falling apart. Right. And, uh, and you guys have how many children? Uh, we have, well, at that Total? time we had five and Africa made six. Now we have seven. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, exactly. But, but, but when she came, she came and she, she, uh, she actually ended up getting saved. And oh, my mother-in-law ended up becoming a registered nurse, never went back to drugs. I mean, and she wanted to even tell her testimony because that whole ordeal with Africa she turned her whole life around. Her life. Her whole wow. life. The, the longest she had ever been sober was six months. And then she'd go back. And this is a 30-year span. Yes. And when that happened to Africa, she, I mean, fully got 
clean after six months still clean after a year still clean now it's been how old are you africa 19 19 19 years <laughs> she became a registered nurse bought her a big beautiful home a mercedes wow. she just totally changed her life but it was nothing but christ i yes. mean so what what satan tried to um make um horrible for our family or detrimental to our family helped to bring faith and like i was i was explaining to someone we would go to church before that happened. We mm. might go to a club that night, Saturday night, <laughs> and then be in church Sunday in the back sleep. But but we'd be at church. But when but when Praise Africa God. died, I'm mean, excuse me, Lord, forgive me. When Africa, when this happened, when Africa, she almost died, changed our life. Now we made the Lord our Lord. He was our Savior. Because I know sometimes God will allow things to happen to make you call on Him. It woke you guys and all up. It woke us up. Now, where were you at when all this was going on, Mama Linda? Right there with my daughter. Yeah. <laughs> you know, telling she, her. Because she was tore up. I mean, this is her baby, mm -hmm. you know. And she was just crying and boohooing. And I told her straight, I say, you go ahead on and you cry. You cry all you can cry. But then you get yourself together. And you put strength in your body because your baby can feel you. Uh, your mm. baby can feel you. She don't want to feel you crying. She want to feel you strong. That's going to give yes. her strength. Yes. You know, so um, I was there. And the doctor, another doctor came and told me that Africa, when I was telling my daughter, giving her encouragement, telling her to go in there and be strong, he was like, why are you doing that? And I'm like, excuse me? What? He said, why are you encouraging her? You shouldn't encourage her like that. What? And I'm like, what? And he said, the baby has, he told me, 80, 20. He, she had an 80% chance of dying. This is a different doctor. And I told him, well, she has a 20% chance of living. And whose report do I want to believe? Yes. I believe the report of the Lord. That's, That's right. who I believe. Yeah. Amen. So I love because all of you guys are saying the same thing. Right. Like when the family comes together, I was reading and doing a Bible study the other day, and it came to the scripture about the Tower of Babel. Mm. And it said that mm. the Lord came down, and he saw that they were of one sound, right. of one voice, and they were working together. And it says... If they continue like this, nothing can stop them. Mm. There's nothing that they can't do was what it really said. Right. There's nothing you can't do when you come into unity and oneness. Mm. So literally the fact that you guys were all saying what God said mm -hmm. was allowing God to step in and transform what they were saying. Because you guys had more powerful belief and you guys had a more, more sturdier faith. Mm. And you guys had an authority in what you were saying, and that was transferring. Every time the devil came to speak death, you guys spoke, it is written. It is, it is written. It, it is, is written. written. And you know, Taryn, I, I just remembered something that happened in the hospital, too. Uh, there was a, another African-American uh, baby named uh, America. Oh, wow. So Africa was Africa. This baby's name was America. Right. And so uh, the, they came to do a, an exam on the baby, and uh, it was supposed to be for America. But I guess when the technician came and saw Africa, she, her mind was like thinking maybe it was America. I don't know. So she <coughs> went ahead and did the exam, and it was an echocardiogram to check her heart. But she, she did it on the wrong she baby? She did it on the wrong baby. Oh. But, but, God. but God, right, because... When they did this exam, they didn't order it for Africa. It was for America. But when they saw it, they saw an issue with her heart. And then they went ahead and treated it. And, but so they, it would, have never they would have never found it. There was no this, reason. Oh, my yeah. goodness. So, so <laughs> it was supposed to be on America. So the doctors explained to me that the test was for another baby, and it was America, or one of the nurses told me. And um, and they accidentally did it on Africa. Look at and God. And so God was able to show us there was something else brewing in there. Yeah. And so she got a cardiologist, and the cardiologist came and did what he needed to do. And now her heart is, you know. I burnt. love that. Yeah. So, but it was just nothing but God, the whole ordeal. Everything that Satan tried to make bad or turn bad for us, 
God turned it around. Yeah. God turned it around. So now, Africa, I know you're active in church, <laughs> and you're helping. You like working with children. What do you want to do? You can just put, talk into Mike, and we can, you can tell us. <laughs> Nursing school or something. Like that. Well, no, you said, you said working with children. Yeah. So, it's on. It's on, it's on there. Oh, okay. So, I like, um, I love children. I did a, um, hmm. I worked at a, um, a day where I, like, helped them. Yeah. And, um, then I stopped around, like, my senior year. And, um, now that I graduated, I want to go to Surreal's College. And I probably do like a two year for um, child development classes. I like that. Mm -hmm. Yay! Yeah. Oh my goodness. Yes. And, and, and your mom said you want to work with special needs kids too. Yes. Oh, it, so be it in Jesus' name. Yeah. It is done. Yeah. And see, and after that, they try to diagnose her with being, uh, they don't say, yeah. They said mentally challenged mm -hmm. in terms of that she would always be like a, uh, I think they said she would always be like, a, I can't remember the age, but a very young age always. Uh, and there would be no way. That she wouldn't that, grow. That she would like, grow. Right, yeah, okay. So they just, you know, but And my you didn't baby, receive that, obviously. I didn't receive that at all. None of that. <laughs> I didn't receive any of that. Right. None of that. Isn't that amazing? And we, we put her in private school. We put her, because they were trying to uh, streamline her and like, um, with special education, we took her out and put her in private school because we, I just, you know, I was not going to receive that. Private Christian school. Yeah. Yeah. You know, um, well, I remember when Lazarus was little and they, and he wasn't talking at like four years old mm -hmm. and they were like, oh, they weren't sure if he was going to talk. I just kept continuing to pray or everything that they would try to say. Mm -hmm. And I, I, I was very... I heard what they said, mm -hmm. but I didn't receive what they said sure. like you guys didn't receive. Mm -hmm. And I was, here I was taking him to the doctors, taking him to speech therapy and everything. And you know what? We were in the car last night, so the Lord gave me these things for the children to have him. My older son, he watched um, the Odyssey. He would listen to the Odyssey series at night. That's how his... His, his Bible knowledge grew so much. It wasn't at church, and I know they try to tell us to send them to Sunday school, but realistically, the Bible says train your children. At, That's right. We're to train them ourselves. We're to show them. So because my children had a history in their family background with some demonic activity, I had to teach them very young. I recognized my sons were prophets when they were like two years old. Mm -hmm. They were having dreams and visions. Mm -hmm. They're trying to explain mm -hmm. to me. Wow. So I had no choice. So we would, wow. they, my Isaac started going to bed listening to the Odyssey series. So recently, the Lord said, I want you to have Lazarus listen to um, Superbook on YouTube. <laughs> Last night, we were coming home from church, and Lazarus breaks out, and he breaks out with the voice like he's the voice of God. And God said, Abraham, go to a place I will show you. And he, he literally memorized five minutes of it and he said up on Mount Moriah and bring me Praise a burnt God. offering and he said then an wow. angel appeared I mean we were in the car wow. I tried to drive and I had to stop and look and then he went to another story but his story he knew the Bible he wow. was using he's Mount Moriah and he's saying burnt offering, and he was saying, I mean, specifically, go to a place I will show you. And here he is, is memorizing the word of God. And I heard through the study, I was actually watching T.D. Jakes on Father's Day, not this year, but the year before, mm -hmm. how this young, this young man said he was... He uh, slurred speech and he was mentally <laughs> retarded, they said. Mm. And a special ed teacher grabbed him like you'd grab the doctor. Mm. And he said, there's nothing wrong with you. And she began to have him memorize scripture. And they say the study says if you memorize a certain amount of scripture, that the brain will actually begin to rewire and refire itself. Wow. Now, we know this because of science, that literally if you yes. cut a brain in half after someone has passed, that there's either these dentrites. There's like white trees or black trees. Mm -hmm. The black trees are bad memories mm -hmm. that is spread across your brain and they actually if you study the word if you begin to think positive and transform they will shrink up all of the bad things and behaviors which is called um oh my schema you have a, you smell something or you see something it triggers a chemical in you mm -hmm. and you start to act a certain way yeah mm -hmm. it it'll shrink it all up and then the white trees will start to grow on the brain right wow. so they're called dentrites mm -hmm. so 
he said that he started memorizing scripture and all of a sudden he started functioning properly, talking normal. And he said when he preaches, he never, ever stutters. Never anymore. Wow. And he began to start telling a story. And so here I was like, oh, my goodness. Now, it's ironic. My son's name was Lazarus. So I was like, come forth. You know, you have yeah, no choice yeah. but to come <laughs> forth, right? Yeah. But Please, now yeah. I see why God said every day during the summer, you've got an hour of super book. This mm -hmm. child is memorizing verb them word for word, mm. all of it's these really stories. Good. I know this story. Let me tell you what happened. Then he goes into mm. character. Mm. And so I said, and the Lord reminded me, because mm. the Bible says that the word of God is medicine to your bones. Praise right. God. And right. so if we would memorize and study mm. to show ourselves approved, not just, just listen to the word, but study to show ourselves approved, to know God. And, you know, and I, my kids are having dreams. They're having visions. The Lord has appeared to them. And they, I mean, their, their, their uh, accuracy is very accurate. Oh. I mean, I, I said, Lord, so I put them on my class sometimes and let them talk to my class. And my class is like, oh, my goodness. I'm like, you guys see why I have to pray, stay prayed up. Absolutely. They know how to use their authority. They know how to use their power. They're saying, Satan, the Lord, rebuke you. Do you know, and I love that because it starts in the home That's with right. the family. And so I don't have, I can afford off days and sometimes up and sometimes out or, or, or you know, I have to stay in line with the word of God mm -hmm. because they are watching me, Absolutely. you know, and then, oh, the other night, my son said he had a vision and well, he had a dream, excuse me. And in the vision, he said, he told us what happened. He said something evil appeared to him mm -hmm. and he said, do you want me, you want to, can I live with you? And my son, it would have been a covenant in a dream, right? Mm -hmm. My son said, no. And he said he ran to Jesus and he ran to his angel. And he said, Jesus told, looked at the, the demonic spirit and said, put his happiness back. Mm -hmm. And he said, the thing, put the happy, put the happy. And he said, then he, he said, Jesus defeated him. He said, mom, there's a war going on. Oh, I want you to know. God. And then he said their swords look like this. And he went all into detail. He said their hair. And he told wow. us what the other ones look like. Yes, and yeah. he told, I mean, he was so specific. He told my, my entire class. He sat there and told us. And his story didn't change from one day to the next. And he talks about Jesus. And he said, you know, their hair was like, he said, the angel's hair was like, a, 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 went into like a blue. But you know when there's fire, the hottest point of fire when it it's turns true. that blue. Yeah, that's right. And I understood what he was saying. Mm. Yeah. Because he was like, and he said, you know, and they wear this. And he was telling us what they were wearing. And then he was like, Jesus defeated them. And then I said, well, do you want to pray? He said, yes, but I'm going to pray in tongues. And he started praying in tongues. And it was so amazing. So this is love. And he told the whole class and the whole class, by, by, like, there's 40 of them by the class, national. They were so intrigued because these children are, we're, we're not just, we're raising up the next Benny, Benny, Benny Hens and, and yeah. Billy Grahams and, yeah. with, and people that take over and the singers and, and they're yeah. going to lay hands. We need Africa in there to transfer that anointing of yeah. living and not die. Yeah. You shall live and you yeah. shall not die to yeah. declare yeah. the works of the yeah. Lord. Yeah. This is what we need. So when I see you guys as a family business, yes. you guys have a business, you guys all work together in your yes. family business mm -hmm. uh, and you serve in the church. You're all about marriage. Like this marriage, this love thing, yes, like yes. They, they are like this all the time, you guys. Like he loves his wife. And, 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 quickly, and she I loves noticed, her husband. And you do, you do, you do. But I love the fact <laughs> how he loves you because you, know, you don't right, see so men that are like doting over their wives like they're supposed to. Right. And you are his good thing. Mm -hmm. And so with a quick sum to sum, you even said that when you first met her, you're like, no, I got to clean myself up before I could talk to this one. Yeah, he Can said you... he was eating too much Alpo. Alpo. No. Ah! Alpo yeah. is dog food. The younger you kids. Right yeah. <laughs> so, what, so tell us about that real quick. I know we only have like uh, five minutes left, but just like this, how did that happen, this love thing that God well, brought she, you into? When, when I saw my baby, she was, she was beautiful to me. But... Um, when I first looked at her, you know how you look at a woman, you say, oh, wow. You know, when I saw her, I winked at her, I said, not right now, baby. I'm eating too much dog food. But later, but later. Fast forward years oh, later. Best how, many, how many years later? Oh, goodness. Ah, baby, how many years? I, I, I put it this way. I was 15. She was 12. She was my sister's best friend. And she was just beautiful amongst a, a bunch of rough folks. But she was the most beautiful thing. I said, if ever I get an opportunity to get that there. So when, it, when the opportunity came, praise God, when it came, I snatched it. 
<laughs> and see, he's known for being very cool. Like if you if you say right. his nickname in the hood, everybody knows him. <laughs> and at the time, he was dating a really pretty girl. She looked like Vanity. But right. most of the kids don't know who Vanity is. Right. Well, but back we, in we, we, we know who Vanity right. is. Yeah. <laughs> she looked like Vanity and all right. the hair was hers. Right. And, I mean, like, and she was beautiful and I hated her. <laughs> but, <laughs> she was like, you know I didn't, Lord. I'm sorry. But I know what you meant. He was like, oh, Lord. Yeah, yeah. So well, he, no, it was different he, with her. But he, mm -hmm. saw, he saw a different light and glow on you. And when, your man, when, you know, when a man finds a wife, she might mm. be beautiful, but maybe she, didn't have, she wasn't wife material. Mm. And, right. and he finds a Bingo. good thing. And you got to fit you and he has to grow where you're going like mm. you were in purpose look at look at what you guys have done with the Lord praise God what 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 I look for um, it was her heart um, she was beautiful she is beautiful from the inside yeah and and one of the things that I can I would love to tell young ladies plain and simple you must meditate on being lovely that piece right there if y'all get anything be lovely and he'll come He'll come like a shining knight, strong and bold, and say, I'm going to get that one. I've been loving my baby for years, and it ain't going to stop, y'all. Just like that. <laughs> and that's it. <laughs> Woo! Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Ah, you guys real see talk, all this man. love? You guys see all this love? Oh, my goodness. He's this so is... funny because he says he used to work for the other right. side. Mm. Now he worked for Christ. Yeah, he works for Christ. 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 And yeah. this family is definitely working for Christ. And this yeah. is what we're talking about. Love, family. Even though you go through trials, the Lord mm. is with you. Yeah. If you guys can say the same thing and honor your God, you will see and you will do great and mighty exploits. I want you to know whatever you're facing today, the Lord is with you and that you will not fail and that you have power and authority over all the power of the enemy and mm. nothing by any means shall hurt you or harm you because of that power and authority. Greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. I'm your host today. I'm so glad you guys came to Carthons. Thank you, Carthons, for coming today. It was awesome. Wow. I wish we could continue, but today we've come to an end. You want to join us, definitely follow us on YouTube as well. I'm TNT, Tara Nicole Tarver, and we are throwing off this lifeline. Remember, your timeline is somebody else's lifeline, and we want to also thank All City, All City he Heating and Air Conditioning. They help me out, and they keep us cool you in, when you're supposed to be cool and hot when you're supposed to be hot. So I thank you. Today you were my plumber, so I thank God for you. Praise <laughs> God. Praise they God. helped me out today. Praise you God. never know when you're going to need them. So we thank God for you. Have a wonderful day. God bless you. I'm Terry Nicole Tarver. God bless.